together with you is show you some example configurations for SNMPv3 on some devices. For example, on a Cisco iOS device, which is a small router I brought here. Uh, on a Juniper Junos device, a uh, small SRX 100H, which is pretty much representative for all Junos, Junos devices with that respect. And uh, for NetSNMP, if we get the time for that. Um, and what I want to do is show you how to configure these devices and show you how to have a look at what happens when you configure these devices. Uh, the configurations that I provided are minimal, as far as I see. You can't take anything away from them, but you can add more complexity to them if, if you want to. Um, we will use the NetSNMP CLI tools to, have act to actually have a look at what happens on the router and how, how you can retrieve information using SNMPv3. Uh, we, if you have the time for that, we will, need a, we will set up an SNMP trap daemon and also show you how, and I'll, I'll also show you how to um, send traps to the trap daemon and under which circumstance it does not work. And obviously we will set up OpenNMS to receive traps and to, to uh, retrieve information from the devices. In order to, to, to configure SNMPv3, uh, we need to configure the security mechanism that SNMPv3 has, mainly USM, so that we can authenticate against the devices. Um, for that, we need, sometimes we need the, uh, the engine ID. I will tell you when you need it and when you don't. The security name, which is kind of a username in SNMPv3, and the authentication and privacy parameters. If you want authentication and, per and privacy, you can also turn that on or off as uh, the need dictates. Um, VACM, I mentioned this yesterday, is a way to limit what you can do when you are logged into, what you can do and what you can see on an SNMPv3 device. Uh, we will configure groups, views, and access rights and see what happens when you do that. Then I will probably run into some minor quirks in implementations that are around. For example, I can tell you three out of the top of my head. Um, we'll have a look at the troubleshooting tools we can use to um, debug if something goes wrong with uh, SNPv3. And if there's interest, interest for it, we can write a simple SNPv3-based Perl program that actually retrieves information from a, from a switch or sends, sends traps. I, I, don't I don't remember exactly what my, what my example pro uh, program does. So what we need to do, when we, need to, when we want to set up SNMPv3, we need to do essentially three things. We need to set up an SNMPv3 user and a group for this user, which is one thing uh, <laughs> if, you want to set, if you want to view it at, the, at it directly. We want to uh, define a, a mere MIB view so that we have the information what we can access. We always have to define an, SN an MIB view, so we always have to define the ACM. Uh, the trivial definition is the user may see everything. We will, be, we will go a bit more into detail. And then we have to permit access. And I'll start because, and I think, how many people of you are, are uh, actually uh, using Cisco devices and Okay, that's a lot. And Juniper? Okay, <laughs> let's start with Juniper because less people know it. So, first of all, we set up general parameters on this Juniper device. Um, general parameters means so that we can see something when we, when we look at the SNMP MIP. We set up a, a device description, we set up a location for the device, and we set up a, a, a contact person, and tell it what to use for the engine ID. I mentioned it yesterday, there are several different formats for the engine ID that you can set up in an SNMPv3 uh, device. The engine ID always has to be unique within one network. And one way to make it unique is simply to use the MAC address of the first interface found on the device. That is, I think, the most essential, the most simple way to set it up. So, in order to do that, I'll switch to the terminal. And I hope I find it somewhere. It's there. Now I have to do some cutting and pasting because I don't want to enter everything, everything by hand. This is the wrong machine. I log into the Junos device. 
Okay. Um, username is OUCE2013. Uh, oh no, I, I'm lying. Open NMS. And the password is OUCE2013. Let me go into configuration mode. Edit system. And now we can start, set description. No, we can't. That's the reason why I wanted to use cut and paste. Uh, edit SNMP, not system. Check that one. And what location? Okay. Um, I'll have a look at it, what we entered. And that is the information we just entered. This is the basic SNMP information that you get back when you, when you pull the required OIDs from the device. And that is also what will show up in OpenNMS when you enter the device and uh, have it monitored by SNMP. Use MAC address. And now we go up and say show. And that's pretty exactly what we have seen on the slide. So this is the basic SNMP parameters. That's not very, very interesting except the MAC address. The MAC address, as I said before, must be unique across all devices in a network because otherwise you would have the same, encryption, the same encrypted passwords in the configuration everywhere where you have encrypted passwords because the engine ID is used to encrypt the passwords. So the next thing is we want to add a user. And that is pretty simple as well. We have to add a user and a, an authentication and a privacy password for it. <coughs> and we will use these very simple authentication and privacy passwords. The problem with cut and paste is that it doesn't work <laughs> that way, at least. Three here's M. With Juniper, you can always use the, the question mark to get information about what commands are legal in the context we are currently in. And you can also use uh, command completion. Now we want to add a user named OpenNMS Monitor. Um, the first thing is we add we added the local engine. That is important because we currently want to use I want to edit a user and want to create a user on the local Juniper device. Uh, as opposed to, for example, when you want to send traps, we have to send, set up a user on a remote device. So currently we want to, use to, uh, to define a user on this box because we want to access it from the outside. Where am I? Um, okay, I can't do that twice. We want to use uh, the more secure authentication algorithm, which is uh, SHA, as opposed to MD5, because MD5 is a weak algorithm.
and we want to set up the authentication password. You can, uh, in Juniper, you can set the authentication password as well as the authentication key. The authentication key would be the, the already encrypted version of the password. And we want to set up the clear text password because you have to see what, what the password actually is. It will not store it in an encrypted version. It will store it in the, authentic key, in the, in the encrypted authentication key version. Uh, what did I use? OUCE 2013 minus auth. And now we have to set up the privacy. And in this case as well, we will use the more uh, secure AES algorithm as opposed to DES. And we will use a very, very secret and nearly unguessable password OECE 2013 priv. Now we go up. Let's say show. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Okay. That happens when you prepare something. I forgot a word. Okay. Now it works. So that's what we set up now. And if you have a look at it, you see that um, the device encrypted the passwords we entered and stored them as an authentication key. If you want to do cut and paste on the same device, you can do that. You can, for example, take the authentication key and reproduce it using uh, something you, you uh, a backup or some, some uh, files you do from the, from the device. So you don't have to know the clear text password to reconstruct this. You can use the authentication key as well. But you don't have to. You can use the authentication password if you know it. So that's the local user open NMS monitor. And the next thing we do is we can define several types of views. Uh, I have prepared three examples. The all view, which is the one I mentioned earlier, which is trivial. It is the whole OID tree that you can access on the device. And I have uh, created a restricted view that we can use to do some experiments, and a view that I drew from a, a log file that I uh, produced when running OpenNMS. These are the OID trees that OpenNMS uh, 2.10 actually uses. So if you want to create a specific user for OpenNMS and want to restrict it so that it can only access the things, things that it is supposed to access, you can use that view, and it will only have access to the OIDs it needs to. So let's try the first one for simplicity as a starter. Up. Oh, how do I call it? All view. OID. Contents include return. So, here we go. This is our complete view on the whole OID tree. Teacher, yeah? Is there a way to implement the parameter names and to have the OID translation? Yes, yes. You can do it, it, you can do it in uh, OID notation as well as in the named location notation. Mm. I'm, Actually, I prefer the OID way because I know what's happening then. Um, the names have the problem that they don't reflect the, the hierarchy. So if you knew, know exactly what you want to permit, that's fine. You can also, instead of OID.1 include, say OID ISO include. That's just fine. But you don't actually know what you, what you permit. So in the OID view, you see much better 
how deep in the hierarchy you are currently with your, with your OID. So that one's possible as well. And the next thing is we have to set up VACM. We have to map, as what I mentioned earlier, we have to map the, the user we just created, the OpenNMS monitor user, to a group, because we, VACM always works on groups, not on users. That is a peculiarity. Uh, you can't enter a user there, and so we define a group that contains exactly that one user. minus monitor group open NMS minus how did I call it monitor group okay now we have set up So intelligent. So this is our new newly created mapping from the OpenNMS monitor user to its group. And the next step is to define access for the group. So we allow the group to access um, the OID view we just created, which is the whole OID view. We have to define access now. Oh, I really love that. Uh, open as monitor group. Default context prefix, security model, USM, security level. Oh, my window's too wide. Privacy. We want to use encryption and authentication in this view. Read, view, and, and we take the all view we just defined. Just a sec. So this is the access statement we just, just prepared. The, this access statement allows the open and monitor group uh, with a default context prefix. We are currently not using context, so the default prefix is the one we are interested in. Um, when the user is authenticated by USM, yeah. when the user is authenticated by USM, which it is because we defined a USM user for it, and the security level is privacy, to access all OIDs. And basically, that's it. So we say, okay, commit. And with the commit command, the configuration we just created is made active on the device. And, and something, obviously I, for, I forgot something. That's one very nice thing about uh, Juno is, if you forget something, it tells you about it. Local engine ID has changed. Oh, yes. We, we talked about quirks. This is one of it. Um, when I set up the initial SNMP v3 parameters, I changed the engine ID. I used the command use engine ID, uh, engine ID use MAC address. When I did that, I changed the engine ID. But because I did not commit, this change has not been made active. Now I made active all the changes I made. One of them was to change the engine ID, and such 
in this, in this moment, all the passwords I entered earlier became invalid because they are encrypted with the engine ID. So if you configure a Juniper device, you always, after you change the engine ID, you always have to do a commit, even if you are not complete with your configuration. You always have to do a commit after it. That is one of the little peculiarities you run into. So but it's not a problem. So your privacy and authentication keys have been encrypted with the old engine right. ID? Right. Right. Because I didn't use a commit before. Yeah. So it has used the old engine ID, and that means, OK, that's it. <laughs> These encryption keys are done with. <laughs> Fortunately, we have command, uh, command buffer. Yeah. We can use it again. <laughs> We just have to edit USM before. And then set user. There's a privacy authentication password. Oops. <laughs> authentication. Huh? Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. Add a local engine. And then we can uh, re enter the passwords, which we do by simply and commit again. So, and now the fun starts because now we can use NetSNMP, the NetSNMP command line tools, to actually retrieve information from this router. In order to do that, it's your turn now. Um, I think we skip that because it doesn't apply anyway. But what you can do, um, the command line tools have been installed on your computers. And they, are, they are installed on every computer you are currently working on. And uh, entering the whole command line string is uh, fun for the first time, but for the second and third time, it starts to get boring. So you create a little file in a directory you may have to create as well in .snmp in your home directory and call it snmp.conf. And what you enter there is the default configuration parameters you use when you want to access SNMP v3 devices, which is default version v3, obviously, uh, default security name, open NMS monitor, that's the one we defined earlier, um, default level, security level, auth proof. That's what SNMP v3 is all about. We want to have authentication and privacy. You define the passphrases for authentication and privacy in the file. Um, default authentication type and default privacy type, SHA, AES, as opposed to MD5 and DES. And the default security model, USM, not v1 or v2, because when we use US, a USM user, we have to use USM as a security model. And these are other parameters that, for example, SNMP get, SNMP set commands would use to access the file. You can also, I'm not sure this is true for Ubuntu. Uh, it is probably user slash share slash nips and add all nips. That is, if you want to see uh, the information that is returned by the, by the router in clear text. So once you have created this file, it's much easier to get information from the switch. The IP address. A what? You have, to create you have to create this file, yes. That is, it, is not, it is not there by default. This is the IP address for the device. You enter that command over there, SNMP walk, um, with the proper IP address, which is uh, 3071. 
didn't change that when I got the IP addresses. So use SNMP walk 192, 168, 30, 71, blank, dot one. Authenticated SNMP v3 agent that answers to commands as an SNMP v2 agent would have done. So it's really not rocket science. And I think we can define uh, another view. Um, let me just create one out of the box. Yeah. But as I said before, it is a very small box. And sometimes it takes a long time to do anything on it. And now let me limit the view that you can see with your SNMP device to a very, very restricted subtree, just to, for example, I, I completely exclude all the enterprise information. It is, we, we don't, uh, the, the configuration of the Juniper box was completely empty, except for the normal uh, interface configurations. And we didn't configure anything for SNMP v1 and, and v2c. And since we didn't do it, it doesn't respond to one v1, v2c. No, 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 but you can have the three at the same time. Yes, you can. Yes. You can, you just have to configure it. Um, I now define a new restricted view. Um, the unfortunate thing about that is that it's very much down the screen. Um, I enter this commando, and this command defines a new restricted view that only allows access to the standard MIP tree, not to the enterprise MIP tree. And if you use that MIP tree, you won't see anything that is specific to the enterprise. You won't see any Juniper informa uh, specific information. The MIB tree that you see now is much, much uh, smaller than the one you saw in the last experiment. And now we have to, to edit the access phrase. V3, VACM. Access, open NMS monitor group. What you see now, I'll scroll it up a bit. What you see now is I modified the configuration for the, for the axis, and I now only allow the restricted view. And no longer the, ah, that was very stupid. And no longer the all view. So when I commit now, the view that you can, that, that you can see when you enter the same command, command as you entered before, um, the view is very much smaller. Commit. Ah. So, wait a second. <coughs> and now retry. Still works. Yes, but not for one to... Uh, no, I'm asking the enterprise name. Yes? Shouldn't work. <laughs> it shouldn't really work. Yes. So you just add 
ah, I added another week. My, my mistake. Hey, I didn't knew that. Hey, that's something new to me. I didn't know that it was <laughs> that it would work. Ah, no, I would have replaced it. The problem is, if, if you look at it exactly, I entered open NMS with a small m, a small m, and a small s, which is a group that doesn't exist. <laughs> so still the old one applies, and so that experiment, okay. How to fail with SNMPv3? Edit, access, delete, group, open NMS monitor group. And now we enter the same command like before. Do you know about rename? Pardon? Do you know about rename? Yes, I know. But rename doesn't work when you have a when you actually have an old one with the same name. Delete that and then rename your one. Yes, that would be possible, yeah. Would have been possible before I deleted it. <laughs> <laughs> So where we are. So now try again. So now it does what it's supposed to. So we've seen how to define a user, how to, well, that's something that doesn't apply. How to define a user, how to um, define security parameters for the user, and how to access it using the security parameters using NetSNMP. Um, with OpenNMS, we are now going to set up OpenNMS to monitor the box using SNMPv3. And with OpenNMS, there's a little problem with SNMPv3 because you can't <laughs> configure SNMPv3 using the GUI. You have to actually go into the configuration file and edit the configuration information there. Uh, the GUI allows you to uh, add SNMPv1, V2C conf uh, community names, but not V3. I talked to Jeff yesterday and he said that's probably going to, to change in some part, in some point, at some point in the future. So let's do that as well. But now I really use cut and paste. I'm really tired of it. Ah. Wow. Just a sec. The screen's just a small. That's my open, open NMS. Good question. So now I go into my open NMS box, which is different from yours. You have a local open NMS installed on your machines. One sixty eight thirty as seventy four, or maybe not. Okay, that's the one. And it's located in opt open NMS each C. Oh, on my box, not on yours. Uh, on your box, it is located in etc open NMS snmpd config, snmp config .xml. What? It's not in the net snmp It is in etc open NMS 
snmp.config XML. Pardon? No, it is open. Just a second, I'll come over. They are available. Yes, you can you can reproduce all of that if, if you have a Juniper box, for example. Um, you can reproduce all of that. Yes. Mm. You can also copy over a, a part of the of the snmp.conf from the netsmp configuration. And the information that is contained in here is essentially the same. Eighty-eight. Mm. Eighty-eight. 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 Yes. Just a second. Is that it? It is there? Obviously, at least on 88. This should be complete now. So if you want to look at uh, OpenMMS, did you all create the file? Oh, just a second. I'll give it back. Is this presentation available somewhere? Yes, it is. You, you will get it from the OpenMMS uh, Open user conference page. I already submitted it to uh, Marcus, he already has it. But what, you, what you're doing is essentially the same as you, as you did for NetSNMP. You are defining the default parameters that it has to use, that OpenMS has to use for monitoring of this box. The parameters are all the same. It is SHA, AES, the password, the username, security level, the version. Security level three, that is a little peculiar, peculiarity. Uh, security level three in OpenNMS means use authentication and privacy. So if you don't set that, you are probably going to have a problem accessing the box. somewhere. <coughs> this is my box. 30R74. Uh, at uh, 3. Eighty. 
Username is admin. Password is admin as well. And now let's add the nodes. Um, I'm preferring the provisioning requisition method. We add a new requisition. No, there is a requisition as well already. Let's add a new one. SMPV3, add new requisition. Then add it, add node. Oh, sorry. Just a sec. You get there by going into admin. Yeah. Then manage provisioning requisitions. Then you add a new requisition with a new name. You can choose. I choose SNMPv3. <coughs> Just have to enter it and set say new requisition. Yeah. The screen is a bit small, so you have to scroll a lot. Then you're going to edit for the new requisition. Add a node that you can name however you want it to. Normally, you choose the node name for it, but you can actually do whatever you want. And then we add an interface, which is the one on the blackboard. 3071. SNMP primary interface, yes. And say save. As soon as you've done that, you say synchronize and have a look at the node list. Isn't there yet? Here we go. You may have to refresh sometimes, but here we go. For some reason, it didn't discover the SNMP service. Not, not ready yet. Yeah. Did you get it? So somebody probably has turned off SNMP, the SNMP for me. Admin. That could be. Because if everyone is setting up the uh, OpenMS to monitor this box, this little little one is probably going a bit over going to be a bit overwhelmed with queries. So if the SNMP service doesn't show up, it doesn't mean anything, <laughs> anything bad. Do we have to make a rescan? Hmm? No, not if, if you use provisioning requ requisitions and say synchronize, it should have to find it should have it should be able to find it. We can do a rescan, yes. Let's let's try it. Did anyone discover the SNMP service on the box? You did, yes. Yeah, so it's probably really a, a matter of uh, overload on this little box because it just doesn't answer in time, and so timeout strikes, and that's it. It has to be the SNMP caller, right? In the yes. In my case, it was commented. Usually it is. Just in case, uh, it was commented. Yeah. Oh, shouldn't be. Well, that's possible. So <laughs> somebody has configured the machines before. But as you see, OpenNMS is also very easily able to access the SNMPv3 managed device. So the same for Cisco. It's essentially really the same. We have to define the general SNMP options which is looking pretty exactly like it did in Juniper, just uh, a, bit a bit different 
in a bit different notation. Um, we set up the SNMPv3 user and group. We define a MIP view and we permit access. The steps are exactly the same, the syntax is somewhat different. So I'll do that without the presentation and just use a terminal for it. Uh, oh. it's, it's six, Cisco 876, and this is 192, same network. What is the price? The next one. <laughs> User OUCE, uh, Open NMS, minus L, and the password is OUCE 2013. Let's have a look at the running configuration, which is pretty boring. No SNMP config configured at all yet. to go there to be able to cut and paste. First of all, the general SNMP parameters. Configure. That's it. Then we have to set up the user. And there's something that you have, to, you have to know about setting up a user on a Cisco device. Because I will enter the commands now, which don't work. Ah, OK. Um, I did that on the slide. You don't, you are not allowed to do that on iOS, actually. So I have to enter everything in one long line. Scroll that command up a bit. It is one long line. It says essentially the same uh, as the configuration in uh, Junos did. I define a user named OpenNMS Monitor, which is member of the OpenNMS group, using SNMPv3, using authentication with the SHA algorithm with the same password as before, and using privacy with the AES, uh, with the AES algorithm using the same privacy password as before again. So this is one line. You may have noticed that the, the Cisco box did take a, uh, some time to, to actually accept that command. And the reason for that is that the encryption in the, in the Cisco device also takes place when you enter the command. A peculiar, peculiarity about the Cisco device is that you, if, you, if you now look at the configuration, it's not there. The configuration looks exactly the same as before. And that is because the encrypted information that the Cisco device stores does not go into the startup config file. It does not go into the running config and not in the startup config file. Cisco stores that in some NVRAM uh, range somewhere on, on the device. SNMP server, this is the standard information. This, this is OK, that's in, in there. But the user is not, cannot be seen. And you can do that on the exec level. Yeah, that was one exit too much. Let's show SNM SNMP user. Here we go. You can't see it in the configuration. You see it on the top level of the, of the Cisco box with the command show as an MP user. And then it tells you open NMS monitor. It has been defined for this engine ID, which is essentially, uh, let me have a look. Uh, it is an 03. That should be the MAC address. Um, in a Cisco specific format, because Cisco adds some bytes to it for some reason I don't really understand. So that's not RC conform. Uh, that's not conforming to the, to the RFC. Um, storage type is non-volatile. 
So this is, has been stored permanently. When you switch off the Cisco box and turn it on again, it's still there. It's active, has not been de deactivated. Authentication protocol is what we entered, SHA. Privacy protocol, AES-128, and the group name is OpenNMS Group. You don't see it in the configuration, you just see it on the exec level. You have to know that, otherwise you, you look for the user until you're green in the face. So, now we again define a new SNMP view. That won't work. This is nearly the same as for Juniper as well, just in a slightly different format. We also allow all the, the whole SNMP tree to be, to be looked, to be viewed. And the last thing is, is we have to define access. With Cisco as well as with uh, Juniper, you can enter the uh, OIDs in a symbolic format. You don't have to use the numeric format for it. Now we use the SNMP server v3. This is our access. SNMP server group, OpenMS group, v3, privacy, match exit. We, do, uh, we, don't, we didn't use uh, any restrictions, so match exit. Ex exit is not, the, not so interesting. If you use uh, context, you need that because you can match the whole context or you can just match a prefix. And we say read OpenNMS view. The OpenNMS view is the view we just didn't configure. So we have to use all view. My mistake. And as opposed to Juniper with Cisco, the configuration is active immediately. So when you now run your SNMP uh, walk command, you should already see on the dot .72 address all the information in the, in the MIP. With Cisco, however, as opposed to Juniper, you are not allowed to forget to write your configuration. Because otherwise, after the next power cycle, it's gone. Except for the user. The user's still there. The rest will be gone. Talk about intuitive user interfaces. So, that's it. Any questions so far? Did everyone see the information in the Cisco device now? So let's move on to the next step. Let's do the same for NetSNMP. NetSNMP can also act as an SNMP agent. It can also be used to uh, query it via, Net uh, via SNMP v3. And with NetSNMP, it is a bit more difficult, as usual, than with other tools, because NetSNMP has some interesting ideas about how to configure things. For example, um, to add a user to a NetSNMP device, you have to enter the information for the uh, username and password and uh, privacy password in a file while the SNMP agent is stopped. Then you start it, stop it again, and then you see the encrypted version in the file. It's, it's pretty interesting. Wrong box. Yours. So <coughs> let's have a look at how it's done before we do it. Again, we set up the general parameters. We set up an SNMPv3 user using the, mecha uh, the mechanism I told you earlier. Um, we define a group for the user. We define a MIP, MIP view and we permit access. It's the same as before. It's always the same. If you follow these steps, it's always the same. It's just the way they, they are accomplished that is differing, different. So, the first thing is stop the SNMP. Um, these commands now 
are uh, referring to a, a Red Hat or CentOS box. So if they don't work exactly on the box you are using, don't be, don't be uh, really surprised because it's a Ubuntu box and it's somewhere in a different place. So this is for uh, CentOS. You will have to look at the documentation where it is on Ubuntu. I can't tell you from the top of my head. Okay, it wasn't running. Yeah. So, um, there's a lot of information in it, especially the, uh, the lines that really tell you not to edit this file, which I will now do, because I have to. Just a sec. And the line that you have to put into this file to create an SNMP v3 user is actually this one. No real surprise, but the format is really relevant. Create user, username, authentication algorithm, authentication password, privacy algorithm, private password. Uh, the file name is on, on Ubuntu. It is probably a different one, and I, I can't actually tell you. Let, let's, let me have a look. It's a bit easier than in the other places. But you really have to know where to put it. So when, I, when I did that for the first time, I nearly went crazy. Because when you don't stop the SNMP daemon before you do it, and stop it after you did it, it's gone. <laughs> you have to stop it, to stop it, edit the file, to start it, then to stop it and then look at the file. And when you look at the file after you restarted it, yeah. then there should be the encrypted version of the username and uh, password in it. But Yes, that's correct. So, I'll terminate. Start it, stop it, start it again, now it uses the file. What you see now, the create user command is gone. It removes it from, from the file and replaces it by this USM user command with the encrypted information in it. So, now we go to etc SNMP, no, SNMP, and edit the SNMP dconfig file. This is a different one. This is the one in etc SNMP, just, just a sec. The first thing you do is add the general information, as before. Pardon? This is uh, etc snmp snmpd.conf. This is the, the standard configuration file for the SNMP daemon. You can enter whatever you want there. Uh, so it's, it's not really important that you enter exactly the same as it is. Then snmpd.conf. etc snmp snmpd.conf. No? No, that's wrong. That's, that's not the right one. So if it's, if it's, if it's not there, Create it. There's an SNMPD. 
Ubuntu. Just a sec, you can copy it over from, the, from this machine, because I'm going to cut and paste it now. And just a sec. Um, okay. You can copy it over using SCP. Um, 192, 168, 30, 80, etc. Ah, just a sec, I have to, have to create it there. Oh, shit. That's uh, <laughs> NMP. Um, take, take 73. SNMP, snpd.conf. So it should work like this. Can you all read the line, the last line? This one? That should work. Pardon? Yes, I can. Just a sec. I just have to add a command, a uh, comment sign before it. So that's it. I'll just check whether it works. Permissions. I move it to temp. So use this one. You have to be rude to do that. You have to be rude to replace the place, uh, to replace the file, obviously. Can you check if it works? It should. I we will. Pardon? Yes, then it works. Okay. So try it that way and then move it when you are root. So sudo move, whatever. You can also type it and then edit it using root. It's, it doesn't matter. So we can replace the old one? Yes. You have to restart SNMP after, you, after the file is in place. And after that, you can use the SNMP walk command as before, just with your, your own IP address as the target address. And it's because I have chosen a slightly different view, 
um, I created the open NMS view. It's the same as, uh, as I created for the, for the other examples as well. And said, USM, no context, USM, authentication and privacy, exact match on the non-existing context. Um, open NMS view, which is this one. This is what open NMS actually accesses. Um, no write permission and no notify permission. Mm, there shouldn't be one. The OpenNMS user, but we didn't put it into a group. So that probably won't work. So now we have the group. Um, no. The group is now open NMS monitor group. That one should work. Restart as an MPD. Can you put it in your slash fan? Yes, I can. That's a command. It's in time now. This is my SNMP. You don't have to do that. Okay. It's just because I messed around with my configuration files. And now it works. So this is net SNMP with SNMP v3. How much time do we have? Oh, again. Yes, the command was the same, just with a different IP address. Hmm. Well, you can take your, your own IP address. When you have configured your, your SNMP agent, um, you can use your own IP address for that. So in your case, it would be 88. You can also use the 73. Well, local host, not always, because it, it, sh it should. Uh, when I configured it, it doesn't. <laughs> yes. Normally, normally it does, yes. So that's it. Okay, so it's no rocket science as well. You just have to know about the, the peculiar way to define the SNMP user, which is really not very intuitive. But um, that is SNMP generally. Uh, only stores encrypted usernames and passwords, and the encryption always runs using that mechanism or using the standard SNMPv3 mechanisms uh, for uh, 
accessing data remotely. So unfortunately, we will, we will no, no longer be able to, to define SNMP v3 traps and notifications, but uh, it is all contained in the slides, and the slides will be available on the web page, including the uh, presenter notes. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. The, IP ad uh, the, the mail address that is contained in the slides act actually works. It's a real one. <laughs> so you have a contact as well. And if you have any questions, I'll be, I'll be around until the conference ends this afternoon. So if you have any questions left, I can, I'm, I'll, I'll be glad to answer that. Thank you. Thank you.